Hey harmonizers, welcome to King's first offsite ride as part of our road trip to Vermont. So this is part two for our road trip. Wanted to show you guys him coming into the arena here, doing a little bit of groundwork before I got on him. Wanted to do just a little bit, especially because it's a long drive and even though they're turned out in a little field, it is kind of small, so it's not really a lot of space to do a lot of galloping around or stuff like that. So I want to make sure he doesn't have too much spunk in his step and that he's feeling all right. And it worked out really nicely because Sarah worked Newton first and then I worked King. So we worked them separately in the arena and there were no other horses in the ring. So it gave us kind of more of a genuine feel of taking them to a show and being all by themselves in the arena. When they go to do their freestyle performances at the Thoroughbred Makeover in October, they will have to be in the show ring all by themselves. And there is a big giant jumbotron that is up there with big pictures and kind of follows them with video. So it's kind of cool that they have mirrors all along the back wall of the arena too, because it adds that element of distraction and seeing that other horse that looks like them. It's probably the closest experience we can get to having a jumbotron without actually having one because at least they get that visual of that other horse and themselves running around the ring. And he really wasn't all that feisty. He was looking out and calling just a tiny little bit, nothing super horrible. And when I asked him to canter, we see this little bit of buck and pull around on the rope, but all being told not that awful for a three-year-old thoroughbred who's just spent an entire day in the trailer and uh, has had one day in the field. So overall, pretty good. I'll show a little bit going the other way here, just doing some trot stuff and working on getting him to be really soft and relax. You can see I'm trying to get him to lower his head a little bit, just stay really soft in his body. So a little bit of kind of friskiness, but really kind of baby friskiness compared to um, some of the other thoroughbreds that I've trained in the past. And here just asking him to lower his head too, asking him to come off of some adrenaline, just a little bit of that calling and being drawn to the door, but really nothing horrible. And it didn't help that Newton was screaming to him a little bit. So that always adds a little bit more of a distraction when the horse out in the field is the one calling. And then the door to the arena was actually open as well. They um, don't tend to shut the door to the arena unless they feel like they have to. So to set things up for success, I started with using these cones as a visual aid and doing little figure eights, not near the arena door. So where he couldn't see Newton and where Newton couldn't see him. I just thought that would be better to set it up for success help him focus on me more rather than focusing on where Newton is and what Newton's doing. And I just love riding King. He just picks up such an easy, natural frame. He really wants to collect in his body and round his top line, which is really nice and very simple for me to ride. Uh, you can see he's doing a little bit of kind of head shaking as we're going around, which is a little bit of kind of a either excitement or a little bit of tension or nervousness. So I'm just keeping him on our little trot figure eight. We're not adding more excitement by seeing Newton out of the door. And I'm noticing that, so I'm feeling it, riding through it, and gonna kind of stick with it until he finds relaxation. Rather than walking without finding relaxation first, I find it's better if we kind of ride through some of those moments and help them find relaxation can, can be a little bit more beneficial for them. Doing a little bit of sideways because every time we start to do some more crossing of the legs can help with that relaxation as well. Giving cookies, of course, because that's what I love to do for my horses is offer positive reinforcement. And I'm giving the positive reinforcement at the far end of the arena, try to help that become a happier place to be rather than wanting to be drawn towards the out gate, the door where he can see uh, Newton there. And as we were riding around, I slowly got closer and closer to the mirrors. You can see there, I walk transitioned as we went by the mirrors and I'm stopping and giving him a cookie down by the mirrors. It was a little bit of a distraction in the beginning. He was a little bit unsure about it, just not wanting to be as close to the mirrors at that end of the arena. So that will just build this up nice and positive. We don't wanna add any anxiety to the whole thing. 
we want this to be an easy task for him. And then you can see he's building up to trotting around the whole arena, still giving a little bit of distance off the wall to get started. But then as we get going around, I get closer and closer. Again, you can see little bits of head tossing excitement going on there. Nothing horrible, nothing uh, really super unsafe or anything like that. He doesn't, that's a nice thing about Kings. He doesn't do anything super bad or crazy. He's just like, oh, I'd really like you to let go of the reins and just let me go run around and play. And I didn't want to do any canter on this ride because he was still feeling a little bit fresh. I really wanted this to be about let's ride, walk, trot. Let's get really relaxed and confident. Let's understand that we don't need to be crazy and also learning to have that energy control, that emotional control, so that way he can stop himself from being overexcited or overwhelmed. And as we build up, you can see as we were coming towards the out gate there, which is towards where the camera was, or the camera is, he really was looking out the door and kind of excited to be walking towards the door. So I just turn, ride the little circle, and give him the cookie on the wall where he can't see his friend, which is a little bit of a, a difficult task in the beginning. Not horrible, but this is where we can form good habits with our horses. So it's really important that we understand how to help our horse be more comfortable in the spaces where we want them to be and not so drawn to the spaces where they want to be. So here again, as we're walking or trotting towards the out gate, he kind of looks and is wanting to turn his head and, and look out the door. So I just really try to keep that inside bend and doing some half halts and things to keep him paying attention. So one of the things with horses that things can kind of boil over and become a big deal. And if you can just keep paying attention the whole ride, then you can avoid a lot of bad things from happening. So for example, he was riding towards the out gate. I could tell that he was looking and feeling like he wanted to go there. So I started bumping my inside rein a little bit, nudging my inside leg a little bit, trying to get that inside bend. And we were able to prevent anything from happening, whether he would have gotten excited and actually you know, reared or tried to run, or I don't actually know. But I always try to prevent it before it becomes an issue, which is so key with horses. Here doing a little bit more trot work as we start to explore more of the arena and trying to get the ability to trot towards the out gate without being super distracted about it the whole time. So here, as I start to go riding towards the out gate, you can see he's doing a better job of keeping in my hand this time. So I actually am able to ride all the way around the arena and didn't need to turn early to keep his focus. So that's looking a lot better. You can see he goes around looking pretty nice. You can see he's starting to get more even in his stride. He's not getting excited at all as he's going around anymore. So things are looking a lot better. He's going to earn a couple more little cookies there. And I felt like that was enough kind of working on his riding stuff at that point. So I decided to do a little bit of confidence building with these bears and asking him to go sideways and get kind of closer to them. Just showing you that footage sped up in super time so that we weren't here for 10 minutes watching that. Um, but as he got more comfortable, you can see he dances around a little bit. He was really reluctant to get super close to the bear. And I essentially just kind of stick with him. I'm asking him for that little bit of sideways. Again, we start to see that little bit of a head toss, which is a little bit of tension kind of coming through. And as he gets right beside the bear, offering that cookie for him. Afterwards, I decided to get off and put the bear on him to go for a little uh, bear ride, I guess, or do you call it a pony ride? <laughs> Taking the, the bear for a pony ride. And I wanted to experiment with the bear falling off of him, which he didn't care about at all. You can see I'm going to give him a cookie for the bear falling off. And you can see he wanted to kind of look at it and he started to arch his neck a little bit at it. But I just popped him a cookie and said, that's perfect. Like, I just wanted you to stand still. And that's really key with horses is rewarding them before it becomes a big deal. I don't know if he was going to be upset by the bear. I've never done anything like that with him before but better to reward him before he's had a reaction and then we can prevent a big reaction from happening and start to teach him really good feelings and associations with this bear or with having something weird thrown on his back. We want him thinking happy thoughts, not getting tense about the whole situation. <laughs> there it goes again. And for example, if I had, you know, smacked him or done something to turn his head away from the bear that was too assertive, that would cause him to lose 
confidence with me. So now doing a ground tie, rubbing the bear all over, practicing doing a few different things. We know we're going to have to ground tie at the thoroughbred makeover in trail, but I'll probably maybe include one as part of my freestyle as well. This is all a bunch of exposing my horse to things that are off site, as well as starting to practice those skills that we're going to want for the freestyle and trail. So that was a really nice ground tie there. And that's even pointed towards the out gate, which is pointed towards the camera. Uh, what a big improvement from where he first started, where he was really kind of shaking his head a little bit and not able to go by the out gate or the door really quietly to now being able to ground tie facing that door, just using positive reinforcement and a lot of the harmony horsemanship philosophies. Now, this was funny though. I thought everything's going really well. Let's try Liberty. And King's like, let's go see myself in the mirror. <laughs> so these are the moments where I'll, I bring him back and I end up, you know, having to work with him a little bit and I get him to do it at Liberty, the figure eight that I was going to ask him to do. But these are the moments that I have to really assess and reflect on whether or not we will end up doing Liberty at the thoroughbred makeover. Because if he has a habit of disconnecting like this, and wandering off and wanting to check out something for himself, then I'll definitely have to be careful if I choose to do Liberty as part of the Thoroughbred Makeover. So stay tuned, guys, for part three.